Hello everybody, this is Thomas. I'm here and doing well today. Hope you are too. And we're going to get started today with a little work with Hyper-V. Um, Microsoft's one of their great, great uh, achievements here. Basically what I'm going to do is give you a round trip look at Hyper-V. Uh, you can find Hyper-V uh, on Windows 10. You can install it on Windows 10 if your machine is strong enough. And you can uh, also have it put on Windows 2016 server. Today I've got it put on a uh, Windows 10 machine. And basically it's a pretty decent machine. It's a Dell T7500 machine. It's got 24 gig of RAM, lots of room for Hyper-V uh, virtual machines to run, and it's got a 6-core uh, Xeon processor in it, which all support um, the Hyper-V technology or virtual technologies. So, without further ado, let's get started. Over on the right, or the left-hand side over here, we've got your Hyper-V manager with your server name. You can actually manage multiple instances of Hyper-V with this just by adding, uh, connecting to another server. Uh, and basically you know its name and you got the properties and the stats, the, uh, the actual uh, ability to do so, you can connect to multiple. So then you come over to the center pane, you've got your virtual machines at the top, which we have none, we're going to create one. The second one is for checkpoints, and the last, but not least, is details. All of these you'll get a little more information on as we go. On the right hand side, right pane, under actions, we've got quick create, which uh, basically, if you click it, it goes to a, um, uh, a way to make virtual machines. And then you've got new, and you've got virtual machine, hard disk, and floppy disk. Eh, it's interesting. Oh. So, uh, we've uh, got import virtual machine, which is very handy. That basically means if you've got a backup copy you, of a full virtual machine that's been exported from another virtual or from another uh, Hyper-V machine or a cluster, you can pull it up live on any virtual machine manager, Hyper-V manager. So the next one down is your Hyper-V settings. We're going to go in here and we're going to take a quick look at it. Uh, basically, the it's quite simple the layout and I'll explain all of it. Virtual hard disk. This is where the disks normally will live if you just go with the basic defaults. I normally run mine on a separate drive, an SSD in fact. I've got a one terabyte SSD drive that I put my virtual machines on. So let's go browse and we'll go to this PC. My Hyper-V uh, drive D here in this case is the one. I also keep some videos and stuff on there. So we're going to make a new folder and basically call it VM. So we'll select that folder and that's where it's going to basically put everything. So we go down to the next option, virtual machines. This is specify a folder to store the virtual machine configuration files in. Basically these files live. Uh, there are just a few different little files that Windows creates or Microsoft creates in the process of building a virtual machine. It tells how the actual virtual machine is configured uh, through the settings. So we're going to put that actually in the same place right there. Keep it all together. Now the next one down is NUMA spanning would basically allow it. NUMA spanning is uh, it's based on processors as well as uh, the memory that they're physically allowed to get to. 
if you've got multiple processors, you basically need NumaNodes enabled to be able to span them. So the next one down, storage migration. By default, it's always two. If you've got a 10 gig backbone uh, network or above, I would say you can get away with migrating more. The migration is based on uh, both network capability and server capability on the other end. I'll get more into how they actually go in time, how they're migrated. Enhanced session mode policy basically allow it. Uh, it basically allows the to uh, well, read the instructions there. <laughs> uh, it's quite simple. Basically, we enable it. Keyboard, we want it to be able to be used on the virtual machine. Otherwise, it'd be a waste. You'd be stuck with an on-screen keyboard use. No, no fun there. Uh, mouse release key, control, alt, shift, left arrow. They give you options. I just go with the default on it unless there is something specific that we uh, have running in the background that uses those which usually we don't. The next one down is enhanced session mode use if available and again we enabled it up there we're going to want to be able to use it so click that button and then of course the reset the whole thing we don't want to do that. Uh, that is if you've manage to mess up the settings on here you can hit that reset button it defaults it back to where it was when you opened it up so at this point we want to click the apply button that puts everything into stone so to speak and click OK our next window down or our next menu item on the right hand pane is virtual switch manager the virtual switch manager basically tells us gives us the ability to put network switches in for us to use to have access to either the outside world through uh, the actual internet, uh, inside only where it communicates on the internal network and that's it, and private basically meaning that it is on its own little network within the machine and it can't actually communicate with any other uh, machine unless it's on that same private network. So what we're going to do is, at this point we're going to create our first virtual switch and I want it to be external because well, let's face it I need to be able to fire up this thing and get to the outside world. Uh, without the ability to get to the outside world, you're stuck downloading the downloads for the updates and everything else that you do manually. No fun. So, click that. Now, what are we going to name it? Well, we're going to name this virtual switch, uh, in this case, external. Notes, we're just going to put in there external use. Alright, so now we come down to the connection type. Where we want it to be connected through. Now, right here is the uh, drop down. You'll notice I've got several network controllers in my machine. In some cases, your machine may be the, the have these or it may be something else you're going to pick the one that is active in this case and in my case this is the one, the Broadcom that is active and allowing to use to the outside world now this is also important if this connection is not being used by this machine specifically and instead it is being used only for the virtual machines you don't need the management system, operating system, to share that adapter. In this case, it's the only one that I have alive on the network, so I'm going to allow the management operating system to use this 
actual controller. That way I still have internet on my PC. So we click that. VLAN IDs are interesting to say the least. They have to do with switches. In a switch, in a network switch, you segregate your networks using VLAN and basically you can segregate down pretty daggone far. Within the Microsoft documentation you'll learn how to, uh, if you're going to get your um, actual uh, MCSE or MCSA, you will have to take a test that involves doing subnetting. And subnetting is a form of VLAN identification. Um, once you've done your subnetting, then you assign your VLAN on your switch to that subnet. And then, basically, in the switch, that data that is on that network gets tagged with that VLAN ID. And it then knows how to go from one to the next, from one network to the next, so to speak. So in this case, we're not using a, a, a VLAN ID and we can go on down here and hit apply. If, uh, yes, we want to do that, go right ahead, it's not gonna disrupt much. And what's gonna happen here is that if we needed to, we could actually go in here and remove that completely and start from scratch. And like I said, if we ever needed to put a virtual LAN ID on it, VLAN ID, we can click that box and come down here and put it in in this little box here. And then click the apply button and go on. So we're going to go on from here. Click OK. Now I've got a network router on my network that will uh, handle giving out DHCP addresses and is capable of multiply, giving multiple on this uh, network. So we're good there. Virtual Switch Manager is where we came from. Virtual SAN Manager basically allows you to set up fiber channel devices in the same manner. I don't use a, a fiber channel network here for my storage area network. Um, and that's what it's all about is your, your storage area network. That's what a SAN is. They commonly use fiber channel. And in order to communicate with that network you have to use a, a fiber channel type device. Um, in this case those are way too expensive for me. So we're just going to back out of that one. The edit disk basically allows us to edit a virtual disk, a virtual hard disk. Inspect disk will allow us to inspect its properties and do a few other things. We'll get to that soon. Uh, stop service basically stops the Hyper-V servers on the manager, uh, the PC. Remove server, if you highlighted a server in, or a virtual machine and click that, it goes away. <laughs> It'll remove it. You'll get a couple prompts. Don't worry, it's not automatic. The refresh is for a refresh view to refresh the view in the uh, virtual machines or checkpoints and whatnot. The view, if we click that, you can add, remove columns or customize. And of course, help will take you to that all-important section of Microsoft's documentation that they put on the, the machine for this Hyper-V manager. Now, if we come up here to the top under file, we've got options. It, it, don't even worry about it. It's nothing to even think about. The other one is exit. Well, that's pretty slick. Action. Quick create again takes us through a, a wizard. New, then you can tell virtual machine, hard disk, blah, blah, blah. And then it basically gives you the same exact options as you do over here under the actions pane in the right hand side. It's made that way specifically so that you don't have to go up here to the this and then back and forth. Uh, the view, same deal as the view button over there, link. The help, there you go. And we'll click about Hyper-V Manager here, and it gives you 
the actual version that it's running. Different versions of Hyper-V give you different access ability to different types of virtual machine um, uh, types, uh, configuration actually. Uh, you've got uh, 5, 7, 9, and they just keep going up. So, we'll click that. It. Now, from here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and call this my first tutorial. And basically, when we come back in the next video, we will be looking at the same screen and we'll um, more or less get started doing a quick uh, virtual machine setup. We're going to uh, do a little bit of work here with this. So, if you all have uh, enjoyed the content and liked the uh, tutorials that I've put out, please, I uh, would greatly appreciate a like down there. Click that button for me. And uh, if you want to see more and be notified of future videos, go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button as well and we'll see if we can get you plenty more content coming your way. 